By 2050, the human population is forecast to expand from 7.5 to 9.6 billion people and will require 70% more food, 50% more fuel and 50% more water. We also need to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by over 80%. And there's no silver bullet. But there is one thing that we can do to produce more food, improve water quality and efficiency, create biofuel and improve the carbon balance. And that is to plant trees. The right trees planted in the right place can improve both our ecology and our economy. And we need to plant them now. We have a global shortage of timber and demand is set to quadruple by 2050. We'll need to plant a billion new trees by 2030. Achievement of this goal will both rely on and reward our farmers. But our farmers can't achieve this ambitious goal alone. We must work together to significantly increase new forestry plantings in the agricultural landscape. These trees will help farmers to achieve their own objectives as well as those of our country. Planting a billion trees by 2030 won't be an easy task, but by working together we can achieve extraordinary things. So we've created an alliance. Ours is a tree alliance, because the planting of trees will benefit us all. Planting trees in the right place on farms with the intention of harvesting and replanting them is a win-win for the environment, for society and for landowners. The farmers who really do well integrating trees into their farming systems are the ones who are really wanting to maximise the productivity of their farm, whilst simultaneously producing high value wood products. At one stage we were putting in 10,000 trees a year because I could see that there was going to be a benefit from the shelter for livestock. I have to admit to being a bit of a conservationist and we've linked some of our remaining areas of native bush with corridors around the pivot circles. When we came here, there was hardly any trees in the gullies at all. The gullies were eroding more and more during winter time in particular and allowed a lot of water to run away. And with it, well, there was a lot of sediment and we were very unhappy about watching our soil just <laughs> wash out to the sea. We've put in probably about seven or 8,000 trees in what is called the riparian areas of this farm. I'm very happy that we were able to use these trees as a way of uh, fixing all of the problems. In terms of carbon, we're doing a little bit as well, which is important. My father started planting the first plantation trees here in about 1998. Farmers had to diversify to be economically viable. Most of the plantations were strategically placed to offer some stock shelter, and then other ones were used for buffer zones with our seed stock operation. We can have some pretty rough cold weather in that early springtime when we've got a lot of cows calving, a lot of ewes lambing. So any added protection that we could offer is quite beneficial. And, and in today's livestock markets, when lamb's worth eight dollars a kilo and every extra lamb you can produce adds up quite quickly. In our genetic enterprise, where we know exactly what that animal is and the genetic potential that they can offer to us, if it's one of the better ones, it, it hurts quite a bit. Trees can actually add a lot of value and not take away from productivity. Everyone is talking about soil erosion right now. So we're losing more and more soil. We're losing and losing more organic matter. When we came in, it was in a really bad shape because it's so dry here, all the moisture evaporate. Eventually, we, we want to run this business like a tree. We absorb carbon and we give out oxygen. We see a lot of reducing productivity because we had a two weeks non-stop wind. And when you have the wind and then the flower in there, we just lose that flower in there and it doesn't uh, fruit right. We're planting 300 manuka tea tree um, along the fence of the property. They're going to grow and um, they're going to protect us from all the pollution from the road. A barrier for noise and attract bees and all the bugs. That is helpful for the vine. I want more and more people uh, getting involved and know of the reasons why we plant trees.
One of our jobs is to bring more value to everything Tasmanian. In 2022, Tasmania will be among the only places in the world that has 100% renewable energy. Becoming 100% renewable is a huge opportunity for Tasmania. If you think about renewable even as a metaphor, it allows you to understand a broader sort of climate change story we can tell from Tasmania. And in a world where we're moving in the opposite direction, we have an island that is moving towards renewable energy, towards wilderness, towards sustainable development. When people come together, as they could here in Tasmania on an island, we could do something very special that few other places around the world can do. We've moved in, in many ways from commodity to premium, to quality, to better, not more. And I think as more and more of us move in that direction, the farming and the agricultural communities can be a big part of that. We will have 100% renewable energy. We can also have zero net emissions on farms through methods like planting trees. And so we could actually deliver the product that the whole world is looking for. So I think in 10 or 20 years, if our job is to bring more value to everything Tasmanian, this is a key way to do it. Our treaty is to collaborate to grow our future economy and ecology through trees because together we can grow the future.